everyone. This is Shantae McLaughlin, and I'm here from Atlanta, Georgia, visiting one of my mentors and friends, Chastity of the world-famous L.A. Body Art. So that YouTube and the rest of the world gets to know you a little bit better, I'd like to ask a couple of questions tonight. Um, first, I've known you forever, but the world hasn't. So can you tell the world, how long have you been tattooing? The, um, the tattoo and the body piercing world, which everybody, excuse my voice, um, a lot of people don't know this about me. I suffered a, um, a larynx accident. I actually had a crushed, lar a crushed larynx, and sometimes I can speak and sometimes I can't. So I've had a really long weekend. I haven't had much sleep, and I'm having a little throat trouble. So I'll get some sleep and, and rest. But anyway, the world's known me a lot longer than this town knows. Um, I was first published in 1992. So I'm coming up in November around 18 years in the business. So we're almost looking at two decades of being infamous in the tattoo and body piercing industry. Um, Lyle Tuttle, actually, we've had some talks about the Tattoo Hall of Fame. And... I am considered for that because uh, there are mentors in the industry, pioneers in, in the industry that have been kind enough to label me as the pioneer in tattooing and body piercing. Wow. Yeah. I so did not know that. Well, now you do. Yeah. Even in, even in my hometown, there's tattooers and there's piercers, and they're like 18, 19, 21 years old. You know, when you turn 36, it's like the midlife crisis. So I'm almost 40, so I'm like twice these kids' age. So they need to do their homework, Google me, <laughs> go for it, you know. Um, we, we basically opened the door. We brought the talk show Tattoo Chat in the Mobile, um, when tattooing wasn't even mainstream. Now, I know the last time that I was in town, we were here in this location, but this time last year, we were on Dolphin Street. How does it feel being back home? At, this new, at the old, new location. You know, you just said it. It's home. How does mm -hmm. it feel to go home? It feels awesome. It feels, it feels great. Um, I was in a location that did not lend itself to the industry. And to my clients, my friends who supported me through that decade, um, it was stressful on everybody just to park a vehicle to come see me. They went the extra mile to patronize me, and I thank you, and I love you, and I didn't only give back to myself, but I gave back to my clientele, so we're home, you know, we have a parking lot, we have a backyard, I mean, it's really a home, you know, so it's, it's, it's awesome in a lot of ways, um, I miss where I used to be on a level of diverse clientele that would come in, because it's a port city, so the ships would come in, and I would meet a lot of different people from around the world. But there's no place like home. Mm. So with you being back in this location, and like you said, you've had this leading tattoo show across the Gulf. Coming from here, where there's not a lot of diversity, what would make you start a tattoo show in Mobile, Alabama? Okay, let's get the record clear. Okay. I was in Los Angeles, California, and I was doing my apprenticeship tattooing. I was acting. I was modeling. I just scored uh, Girl of the Year for Lear Club Productions. I did the pilot for Tattoo Chat in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I came home for love and my family. And so I already had the show in the can. And I approached cable networks here. And it was hard getting that show on the air. Um, I was doing reality tattoo TV 10 years ago. And um, I'm from here. I'm home. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I'll start traveling again real soon. My daughter's five now. But the show was to be launched in Los Angeles, and I came home for all the right reasons, and I launched it here. So that's how Tattoo Chat started here. I was way ahead of my time, you know. In addition to, like, I know this about you, but I don't know if the world knows this about you. Can you tell us a little bit about your fighting career? My fighting career is, is worldwide because I took a federal pro fight card. And I never plan on being a pro fighter by any means. I went to the fighting gym to get in shape, like most women do. And three months later, I ended up with a pro contract at age 29. And 
I retired right after my child, and then once again I felt old, so I took another fight. That was a year and eight months ago. That was my last fight. I retired undefeated, like <laughs> like Rocky Marciano. <laughs> and um, you know, I fight with paper now. You know, I, I only fight with paper. I've never hit anybody outside of a boxing ring. I've never been a violent person, but the best fights are on paper anyway. So, you know, those, those days are gone. Came, saw, conquered, move on. Also, can you tell us a little bit about you on the political circuit? I try to stay as far out of politics as I can. I know how important it is, and you want to get into it because you know that you influence people. But you've got to be real careful because your personal opinion can, can influence a lot of people. And... Politics is something that should be personal. It, it, it's, so, it's such a hard thing because you can make a friend through politics and you can make an enemy and just like that. And the one thing that I want to say is be fair, be just, and listen to everybody. Because to me, 2009, there's no longer Republicans, Democrats. It's the government and it's us. It's us against the government. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. No, I'm independent. You know what? I'm, I'm for whoever's got the best ideas right now. So I don't like labeling things, you know. Mm-hmm. I totally get it. I totally get it. So between the fighting, the marketing, like we all know that you're the queen of